first time, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. So this is my first video of the year and I wanna say happy new year, you guys. We made it to 2021. <laughs> 2020 was definitely a year for the books. Um, it is astounding that in my lifetime, I experienced the things that we experienced in 2020. Um, <clears throat> well, I was thinking to myself, I was like, if I had to sum up 2020 in one word, what would that be? And the first word that came to my mind was stillness. I know, right? Stillness. And <clears throat> I'm like, why stillness? But then I realized, you know, it wasn't just our neighborhoods or our communities or our city or state or our nation even. Literally the entire world at one point or another was forced to pump the brakes, hit pause, and almost shut down completely. And we were all forced at one point or another um, to this, this place of stillness. And <clears throat> I really appreciated um, having to almost be forced to that place of stillness because what I realized um, was that it gave me time to self-reflect and think about, you know, my life, you know, and think about, um, you know, some of the things that I've been wanting to accomplish and getting up the courage to actually take action on some of those things, uh, like, you know, starting this YouTube channel, um, setting our scholarship fund up uh, as a 501c3, more to come on that, so be on the lookout. And um, and then also, I know that for me, uh, one of my love languages, my top love languages is quality time. And so the, the, the being forced into this place of stillness, it gave my family and I an opportunity to be together and spend a lot of quality time together. Since March of last year, my husband and I both um, have been working from home exclusively. And right around that same time, we decided to take our daughter out of daycare for health reasons and for her safety uh, in regards to her health. And, um, you know, we've just been able to spend so much quality time together and it's been absolutely wonderful like literally my love tank is overflowing <laughs> um because we have spent so much quality time together and then on the other hand you know being forced into this place of stillness also caused me to become much more aware um it forced me into this this place of awakening to really see what's going on in our country, um, to see how ugly people can really be, um, and because even though you like you know it and you and and you see things that are happening, I think that in our normal day to day, as we were as we were living prior to two thousand and twenty, um, it was so easy to just uh, downplay it or let life and all of the busyness just wash over it and it become like a non, you know, uh, one of those things that just you don't think about a whole lot. But being forced into this place of stillness, you know, it caused us to really, or for me anyway, to be awakened to really see what's going on and to see how some of the cancerous um, aspects of, of how our country was built is still very much alive and it caused me to understand more now than ever why it is so important to say Black Lives Matter even though there are others that want to um, downplay it or you know uh, try to override it with other sayings and slogans and things like that but Black Lives Matter I realize it is not a slogan it is not just a, it's not even just a mantra it is literally a life giving statement it is a statement for life because our lives matter um and so it it really it really you know 
forced me into this place of um, being more aware and of awakening. And um, I, it, it has caused me to realize how important it is to invest in um the bl our black lives invest in um honoring black lives invest in you know our worth invest in our enterprise and um that is something that i find very important to do on my channel is to highlight beautiful blackness you know um so yeah, you know, if I had, you know, to, to sum up 2020, that is the word that comes to mind, um, being forced into that place of stillness, which is, stillness is a very powerful thing. Um, and I think that the power of the stillness that we were forced into, um, you know, although there were a lot of things that were heartbreaking, I know that um, for my family, my grandmother last year, she went on to be with the Lord. So a lot of different things um, that were difficult, but uh, that place of stillness was a powerful force that um, I think for m many uh, individuals, forced us into um, seeing things differently and, and maybe even going after goals and dreams that we had sort of kind of let go by the wayside. Um, but here we are now. Here we are in 2021. Um, the beginning of the year, January, uh, represents and it means the start of a new year, start of new things, right? And... Um, Another thing that uh, 2021, don't mind my little friend back here, you guys. Um, but another thing that 2021 or January, let me say that January um, means for me and I'm sure a lot of uh, other individuals and especially uh, churches is the beginning of the year fast, um, the corporate prayer and fasting time. And I don't know about you, but if I'm completely honest, you guys, I love January just because it is the start of a new year and I'm always excited for the start of a new year. I'm always excited about new beginnings. But for me, January is always has always been sort of bittersweet because ever since, you know, I started attending a church and um, the whole idea of corporate prayer and fasting started for me, I think it was like maybe back in 2008, 2007, somewhere around there. Um, I always am very aware that January also means starting the fast. And it's sort of bittersweet because I'm like, okay, I love the the idea of the new year, new beginnings, but uh, the fast. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, um, I never really meet this time of prayer and fasting with this like excited, uh, you know, expectation and oh, this is going to be great and I'm excited for this. It's never really been that over the course of the years for me. It was always just this kind of, <sighs> here we go. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe I'm alone in that. Um, but it's just, it has been a challenge over the last few years of my life, um, looking to start the whole beginning of the year fast. And, um, you know, I'm like, I personally am not a huge fan of cold weather, although I have really started to appreciate the winter months um, uh, as I've gotten older, the nostalgia, thinking about, you know, uh, memories of me and my brother putting on um, uh, the um, store uh, plastic bags on our shoes and going out and skating on the ice on the streets and things like that. Just that whole nostalgia and the memories. Um, you know, I really started to appreciate uh, the winter months and the beautiful snow and things of that nature. But in and of itself, I'm not a huge fan of cold weather. So when January comes, you know, that bittersweet side of it for me, um, I'm like, okay, it's cold. We get snow half the time, snow and ice, especially here in North Carolina. So then half the time, I'm not able to go where I want to go. So I'm, it's cold. I can't go where I want to go. And now I can't eat what I want to eat either. <sighs> you know, but I'm going to be a great Christian after this though, right? You know, um, just, yeah, I, I, I just, 
honesty is that I never have really over the past over the course of the past years met this time with excitement and um, expectation and I had to come to a resolve with myself if I was going to continue to um, participate in the beginning of the year fast, in which I, I, I realized that fasting is not something that's just designated for the beginning of the year um, because it is something that can be very vital and important in, in our spiritual growth throughout the year. Um, but I know that it is very um, known for many churches to do together at the very start of the year just you know to help uh start the year you know building that spiritual uh growth and to help set the tone of the year and um but i had to come to a resolve with myself if i was if i was going to continue to participate because i'm like dia you're doing yourself a disservice doing this out of just obligation um, and one of those resolves, resolves that I had to come to is that you cannot do this because it's the popular thing to do in church. Um, you know, I found because I, I grew up in church and a lot of the times, you know, we can get uh, stuck in this rut, you know, as Christians doing things because you know, the pastor says to do it, everybody else in church is doing it. And so we just follow suit and we just do it too. Um, not out of any personal conviction, not out of, you know, finding purpose in it and out of it for ourselves, but because it's the thing to do. And for me, um, fasting was that thing. It was just that thing where it's like, okay, you know, pastor says to do it. Everybody else is doing it. This is what we're supposed to do as Christians. So here, I'm going to do it. Um, completely out of obligation, completely with no kind of um, personal connection. Um, just you know, it, it really was just an obligated task that I needed to do. And um, I'm going to count down the days, 21 days, 40 days, whatever days it is. I'm going to count down the days. Um, and I'm sitting here and all I can think about is what I can't eat. I'm, I'm, I'm not focusing on, you know, what I can, um, you know, what I can have or the 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 benefits of the things that I can have I'm not thinking about the other aspects of it you know the spiritual growth that I can ex that I will experience and all those things all I'm thinking about is what I can't eat and how many more, how many more days do we have to go until this thing is over and when it's over I'm pretty much going right back to living the way I was before this whole fast started um so I had to come to resolve that this is nothing for you to do because it's the popular thing to do in church. If that's going to be your attitude with it, don't do it at all. Just don't even do it. Um, because you, there is no benefit, in my opinion, from what I have experienced. There's no benefit in doing it just because it's the popular thing to do. Because again, it's just out of obligation. And then, you know, I had to also come to the resolve, idea, make it personal. Um, you know, I know with corporate prayer and fasting, a lot of the times uh, we will receive um, the prayer, the scriptures uh, from church, you know, the prayer, the scriptures to, to focus on and um, prayers that we can pray, you know, about our nation or about, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'll take the list. Okay. And here I am, you know, I'm just, you know, going over the list. Okay. Pray this, pray that, go read this, go read that. If I did it at all, half the time. And, um, there was just no personal connection at all. And I can recall the first year where I actually made it personal and I actually gained so much out of that um, that time of prayer and fasting. And it was around, two, it was the year 2012. I remember the end of 2011, I had a personal conflict going on the inside of me, a decision that I needed to make, a way, um, something that I had um, been involved with in my entire life, um, revolving church. And I, I really was struggling on the inside about how I was feeling. And I was like, okay, God, um, I really need direction from you uh, during this time of fasting and prayer. And 
because if I don't get direction, I don't know that I'll make the right decision. And this can impact the way that I go forward in my life. And I, I want to do the right thing. And um, so I really, really made it personal um, that year. And I can remember I could, it, it didn't even dawn on me or I wasn't as aware of what I couldn't eat. I wasn't thinking so much about the time because I had so much of a hunger on the inside and so much a desire and this personal connection where I'm like, I need something from you. So yes, I'm going to take the list. That I'll read it. You know, I will read the scriptures from church. I will pray the prayers, but I have something personal that I need from you. And I am expecting to get an answer for this situation this year. And and um and I Garrett and, and you know it was amazing because at the conclusion of that fast it was only the next month in February where an answer came and it was it was like a weight was lifted um it was life changing like I could it was like a breath of fresh air it was like drinking water it was just like so much freedom um and and just uh peace and 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 just a weight being lifted um getting the answer that I was looking for and I really attribute you know part a, a huge part of receiving that answer from actually making that personal connection during that time of fasting and so I find myself here 2021 in a similar place where I'm starting this year in a completely different place than I've ever started in my entire life. I'm starting 2021 as a wife and a mother. Um, 2020, I started the year as a fiance and a mother, but this is my first year starting the year as a wife and a mother. And with all of the different um, ideas and concepts and business ideas and things that God has placed inside of me, I can literally feel myself being in, in a paradigm shift in my life. I can like literally feel the plates in the foundation of my life shifting. And so I'm hungry, you know, this year for just um, direction from God so that as I move forward as a wife, as a mother and into these um, enterprises and business ideas that I can, that, that, are, that are like just so alive in me that I move forward in the right way. And um, so it's again, one of those times where I can't even be focused on um, what I'm not eating or the amount of time because I just have such a desire to gain direction. And so I, um, I just wanted to encourage anyone out there who might have a similar mindset that I've had in the past where it was just like, <sighs> fasting. Here we go. Um, if you, you know, maybe take a moment and think about why you're doing it. Um, is it just because it's a popular thing to do? Um, have you made that personal connection? Maybe those are some of the things that can help you have a more positive experience out of your fact. Um, and then too, one of the things that I, I have tended to neglect in fasting is, um, the practical life applications that can come from fasting. Uh, I know so many times in the past, um, I would try to over spiritualize things, the, the whole concept of fasting in my head, which also made it a challenge because I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to be praying this amount of time. I'm supposed to be doing this. And I'll be completely honest with you. Even during fasting time, I still find it a challenge to sit down sometimes and really have that you know, that, that, that long, you know, time of prayer and I might go two good days and I, and I'm actually like waking up early in the morning and, you know, um, spending, you know, the time and maybe reading something, reading, you know, um, my Bible app or something like that. And then after that, you know, the day, the next days I, I end up getting so busy. So it's still, a, it's still something that I'm working through to spend that time. Um, but I find that, going back to the idea of making it personal is that uh i don't have to just sit and 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 um feel like i'm you know just just spending four hours in prayer or whatever 
even when I might just take a moment and just listen to some worship music and have nonverbal communication with God and just let him talk to my heart, some of those moments are are the most impactful for me. Or while I'm in the shower, you know, where I'm alone, there's no one there. There is you no know, my daughter, my dog, no one, my husband, no one's there but me and God. And so as the water is washing over my body, so is, you know, the voice of God washing over me and helping me get answers on things that I need to do um, or, you know, overcome conflict or whatever the case may be. Um, but also, you know, the practical applications that can come out of the fast, I just would sometimes tend to, comp I would tend to completely neglect because I'm trying to over-spiritualize this idea of fasting. Uh, and it's supposed to be, you know, about these multiple hours of prayer and, 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 and reading, you know, half the Bible and all these kinds of things and just completely over-spiritualizing it. Although I realize that as, through fasting, it definitely is a time of spiritual growth, but like, it does not mean to oh, you have to over spiritualize the actual act of fasting and uh sometimes that's what i would do and not see those practical life applications that come out of it such as health okay if i'm completely honest um Eating healthy and having a regular exercise or workout regimen is something that I uh, struggle with. It is difficult for me. I don't enjoy exercising. And although I do like eating healthy foods, I absolutely love eating unhealthy equally. Um, <laughs> I love sweets, okay? I love chocolate and I love all things cookies and cakes and pies and all that good stuff and so I find you know many times where I will get into this mode where I'm like eating the whole pantry I'm finding every sweet thing in there that I can find and I am just like <laughs> you know um but during this time I realized that um I'm feeding my body things that uh that can contribute to good health and these are these are things that I should allow myself to carry throughout the year, making those positive uh, choices and what I put in my mouth, because I know that I can't control everything. I can't control everything that may happen to my body. Um, but what I can control is what I put in my mouth and I can control the activity I choose to do with my body. And so um you know, when I think about all of the things that um, my husband and I, we talk about that we want to pass down to our daughter, things that we um, learned later in life, uh, like things about finances and living a minimalist lifestyle, acquiring um, memories and experiences over acquiring a bunch of stuff, different things that we want to pass to her as she's young so that she doesn't, you know, she's not behind the curve um, as she grows up with these uh, different um, um, principles. One of the things that I really want to pass down to her is fitness, health, um, taking care of your body, eating good, eating well, not to say that you don't have to, um, you know, enjoy uh, what's out there and the different things that we like, but um, just, you know, with within reason. And um, I really, I, I really want to challenge myself this year. Um, I, I, my goal is 30 pounds down, you guys. So uh, I really, 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 uh, want to find that that sweet spot for me i've been struggling because i when i'm trying to lose weight is when i had the hardest time losing weight when i'm not thinking about it sometimes i'll go get on the scale and i'm like i'm down three four five pounds but when i'm like concentrating on losing weight i get on the scale and i'm like up to three four five pounds and i'm like what is what is this dynamic here? So anyone out there that might, um, you know, have expertise in fitness or whatnot, or if you might know of a good personal trainer in the Winston-Salem area, please let me know because I really, I'm, I'm really trying to um, educate myself on um, how, the things that for, for my body type, you know, the things that I should be putting in my body and how much activity I should be doing and that kind of thing so that I can find that sweet spot so that I can uh, reach my goal. I really need to reach that goal of losing 30 pounds by April, you guys, because I have something exciting coming up um, that I'm looking forward to. And I want to have this, this 
30 pounds off by then if I can. Uh, so, but yeah, you know, that is, that is a practical life application that I can uh, take from this time of fasting is health and being cognizant of what I choose to put in my body throughout the year. And I know that there are moments where it's easier to fall off the wagon. Um, hey, when it's cold, uh, when, when I'm watching TV, um, when I'm, you know, just, there are just triggers, you know, that makes it easy for, for me to just like completely fall off the wagon. So I really want to be um, intentional this year in taking that practical life application and focusing and being cognizant on on um, my health and um, being you know that fitness aspect of my life and uh, speaking of focus um, I, I also realized I, I at the beginning of the year well at the end of every year a really good my, my best friend um, Tamika who is in the uh, taste of Thanksgiving video with me um, she always does a girls um, a girls uh, get together and uh, we have games and you know good food and things like that and of course this past year we had to do it virtually uh, staying safe with COVID but um, it's always a good time and one of the things she's all she always challenges us to do is to choose a word for the coming year that we're going to use it's kind of like a mantra for the year right and so um, when we had our girls get together this this past Christmas season my word was vision and um, um, but the word that has really resonated with me um, as the as the beginning of this year approached and even now the word that actually resonates with me so much is the word focus and um, I, I I kept you know trying to think like why do I keep just like having this this like um, pull with this word focus but i came to the i've, I've come to the understanding and, and more you know as as things unfold and god is you know talking to me um i i i come i'm coming to the understanding and the realization that the being at this point in my life where i am you know being a wife and a mother as i've you know said um, it can be so easy to get distracted by life. It can be so easy to have um, all of the demands of life that's pulling at you, especially when you have added responsibility to pull your focus away from what's really important. And I took the liberty to look up the word focus because, I mean, hey, by default, we all really know the gist of what focus is, right? But I was like, you know, I want to actually look up the definition of what focus means. And when I looked up the definition, it said the center of interest or activity, the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. Now say that again, the center of interest or activity, the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. And when I looked up, you know, the definition, the first part that says the center of interest or activity, and I'm thinking, what is the center of my interest? What does my focus what is it centered around? And then when it goes on, you know, to say the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. And I'm like, do I have clear visual definition for my life? And this past December, I did my very first vision board. And before last year, I've always struggled with the idea of even a vision period or doing a vision board because I'm like, I don't know. I was living, listen guys, I was living my good bachelor life, okay? My bachelorette life. And, you know, it didn't really resonate with me um, that I needed to really have this vision for my life. I'm like, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I'm having fun. I'm going to do me. And, you know, the things that, you know, I will I'll, I'll just wing it as it comes. But now I realize that there has to be focus, a clear vision. And 
that's something that God is um, is is challenging me uh, to have that vision and create that clear focus of what actually truly matters. It's not a bunch of things. It's not, you know, even trying to acquire greatness. That's not the focus. Because even in the businesses that he, the, the ideas that he's placed inside of me and has, you know, allowed me to start to take action on, there is purpose behind it. And just like the word says, you know, your gifts will make room for you, but your focus should be on your purpose. And that is where I'm challenging myself to focus on the purpose and what I'm doing. And then also more, even more importantly, is that as I am working and aspiring to these things, don't forget that the most important focus that I need to have at this point outside of my relationship with God is my family. So although I need to invest time in my business and I need to invest time to make it great and I need to invest time, you know, to make the build relationships and all of the things that I need that are going to help me to grow and make a great business. Those are very vital. And it's a blessing that I have a husband, uh, you know, who is willing to give me that time, you know, because I mean, let's just be honest, there may be uh, individuals out there in relationships where that may be a struggle, you know, they may have desire to go back to school or things like that, but their spouse may not be on board. So I'm grateful that God has allowed me to have a spouse who is on board and who uh, is totally okay with me going after my goals and my dreams. I think that is very important. So you know, if you um, are, uh, you know, in a relationship or looking to be in a relationship, you know, one of the things that are very important, or at least I know for me, is to have someone who's going to support your ideas or your dreams, or at least going to be able or at least willing to listen. Um, and so, but even though, though, you know, spending that time and, and you know, and growing my business and creating those relationships, the most important relationship is my family. And I don't want to lose that focus. So as the year goes on and as, you know, things, God begins to elevate me in whatever ways he's going to choose to elevate me, I know that he is reminding me, Dia, what is your focus? What are you focused on? Are you focused on the numbers? Are you focused on the dollar signs? Are you focused on these things that can really pull you away from what actually matters? So I just want to encourage you that um, if you've struggled, you know, with vision or focus, you're not alone. And um, we all are still working to become the better versions of ourselves. So don't get distracted or discouraged to think, I'll never, I'm, I'm, I'll never get there because you will, you will. And um, as you know, this year uh, it progresses, I just challenge you to continue to remember what is your focus? What are you focused on? Are you focused on the things that really matter? Or, or possibly have your focus been pulled away into things that are just distractions. And I want to encourage you, if you need to, reset, recalibrate, and refocus. It's okay. We all have to do it sometimes. So I'm wishing you guys an amazing, amazing 2021. I believe that it's going to be a great year. I'm choosing to intentionally have a great year, regardless of what challenges may come. And I want to also encourage you, if you have not done so already, stop, take a moment, find a reason to laugh, and keep smiling. Until next time, and always be blessed.